Welcome to Court Cousins. Two cousins sharing laughs and talking the team they love, the Orlando Magic. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody to episode three of Court Cousins. I am Kyle. I am joined by my co-host, my cousin, Jason the Peach over there. And just like every podcast, we like to get started by, uh, you know, seeing how each other's doing. But we do it a little bit differently here. We like to do it on the social emotional meter of a Robin Lopez. So, Peach, I'm going to ask you, how are you doing for the Rolo check-in? Before I check in with my Rolo check-in, congratulations to Rolo on his high school on uh, retiring his number. Uh, this past week. Congratulations on that. He wore 33 back in high school. For my Rolo check-in today, I am going, I've gone into my magic, the card gathering segment a little bit, and I found some, some baby Rolo. Look at him. He's fresh face. He's coming down the lane and he's fixing to jam on you. He's looking to put you on a poster. Brandon Roy just watched him soar by there. And that was wise for him because otherwise his career would have been shorter than it was. And then here's another one for reference from the same season, but he's clean. He's coming through down the lane and he's ready to, to slam dunk. And that, that's where I'm at. I'm kind of like, look at this basement. Look what I've created. We're moving forward with the show. Things are going really well. We got an Instagram now. We got a website. You know, we're digging our heels in and we're coming down the lane and we're about to jam all over everyone's face. So if you don't want to be on the poster, get out the way. <sighs> I don't know why you needed to do Brandon Roy like that, but I love it. He was on the back of the card. He's just there. I can't help that he's there. He's just watching. Just an innocent like, bystander. Watch. He was. And I feel bad for that guy because he would have been a great NBA player if he'd have been uh, able to stay healthy. But a lot of guys have that problem. Anyway, I'm interested to know how that you're doing on a Rolo, on a Rolo check-in here. How's it going? How are things? Peach, I'm glad you're feeling so exuberant, so excited today. I'm feeling kind of pissed off. Uh, I had a pipe burst in my house. So that's thousands of dollars out the door that, you know, I didn't Ooh. expect. That's not fun. Uh, we have media day happening today. And instead of talking about all the young talent we have, we're talking about medicine and Jonathan Isaac and MBA policy around vaccination. So that's kind of getting me pissed off. So I am mm -hmm. New York Knicks, Robin Lopez. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did not know this until I started looking into what Robin Lopez, I was feeling like, but Robin Lopez does not have a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, getting rough and getting in people's faces. There is an epic brawl of him online coming to stand up for one of his guys. When he was against the thunder, he's gotten into it with his brother uh, he's was in a bull scuffle. I mean, this guy will stand up for the team. And that is something I did not know about Rolo. And I like it a lot. So I'm feeling a little mm. angry, but I'm going to channel that anger into some energy here for this podcast. Well, I, I'm sorry that you're upset. And I'm sorry that you're a Rolo that's stuck on a really bad Knicks team. I get how that can be frustrating. But yeah, Rolo, he's he's a, you were the one that put Rolo on the map to me that this is a renaissance man. This, this is a, a majestic man, I believe you referred to him as. Um, and I've been peeling back the layers on this onion, and I'm liking all the different parts I see. Now, look, there are parts where you're angry, and, and I'm sorry that you're feeling that way. But as you saw from the fresh-faced Lopez, you can always get back to a better place. And I think I might cheer you up a little bit with this tweet from Robin Lopez earlier today, if I may share it with you. Okay, I'd love it. It's a, it says, I've decided to haze the Magic rookies by making them get me the newest issues of National Geographic, Popular Science, and The New Yorker when they come out, and we're going to have a little magazine club and talk about what we've read. It will be delightful, and you can't join. <laughs> I mean, that's a renaissance man. He's going to keep those young rookies honest, and that's the kind of good team player that you want. He's going to fight for you on the court. He's going to fight for your brain and your, and your health off the court. Love this guy. And I love, love this social troll. media presence. 
Yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's really what social media is all about. It's about the troll. It's about having fun, stepping outside your comfort zone, trying something else on. So we're going to get into our first segment. We like to do segments and bits on this podcast on Court Cousins. So we're going to get into the social media roundup. And in this segment, it's just like what it sounds. We scour around the internet and please send us now at court underscore cousins. We look for anything that the magic fan community is posting, things that we think are funny, intriguing, and we just talk through them. So, you know, this is better viewed on our YouTube, but we'll describe it for the listeners. So mm. the first one, the first one, Peach. This, uh, this yes. might be my favorite. I think this might be my favorite. <laughs> so we're starting out strong. This uh, <laughs> post is from on Twitter at RGZNBA. And the username is Johnny Footlong. And Johnny Footlong. there is a selfie of, let's just say, a very beautiful woman. Because I don't want to get in trouble with my lady. And He's hot. I don't have a lady. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> she she has posted tell me what you want in this sexy pose in the mirror and johnny footlong replies healthy knees for jonathan isaac and markel Fultz." <laughs> and i always get a kick out of when somebody posts one of these ones that's supposed to be a oh what would you do with me if you had me for 10 minutes and somebody goes another one this one really hit home for me and I think a lot of the magic community as well <laughs> I wonder what her response to that would have been like who are these people <laughs> or that's I, not really what I was looking for <laughs> I don't know what it says about me that I I would prefer uh healthy knees for Jonathan Isaac and Markel Fultz than probably anything that you know what probably wonderful young lady could provide me I just really hope well, you have a girlfriend. For so. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm already taking I'm care gonna, of that I'm department. Gonna, if I if I have to decide, since we're talking about it, I think I I think I'd have to go with her. No offense, <laughs> uh, Magic fans, but uh, there's a good chance that Jonathan Isaac's not going to play much, and Colts <laughs> might not play much either. So since they may not play anyway, uh, why should I be left in the dark here? Let's go. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one. This one is uh, from the Orlando Magic handle, the official at Orlando Magic. It is a post from J. Cole's Orlando show at the Amway Center. With and, and really, it's great that he came through practice, but the reason I needed to talk about this is because this image, he is wearing a freshity, fresh, fresh jersey, custom jersey. It's the blue pinstripe classic like you are rocking right now jay but it's dreamer no, i thought i was gonna have the best jersey on the show but i guess no not. not today my friend that thing is fresh uh dreamer 15 just ah i want it hmm. yeah i don't know what it means um i had to look up uh j cole early this week because i got a little confused because you know we have a player named cole so it, like when i first saw it i was like wait what and i was like wait what's his name again it's Cole Anthony like what who is this guy and I'm just I don't really know who he is I've heard he's a music artist I'm not familiar with his work um, he seems like a big deal because it seems like they mention it everywhere like ESPN and Sports Center, and everybody was retweeting that he's playing and I'm like okay so but apparently he's like Drake Light or something I, I guess oh my I'm, god I do not is he our Drake I don't name. know no I'm asking. like no. I don't know no, no, no. Do? J. Cole, J. Cole is a far better lyricist, in my humble opinion. But dang, my cousin, you live so how do you I know you're in a basement, but how are you so far under a rock, Jason? You live in Boston. I'm a white guy from Vermont and I live in Boston. That's why. <laughs> I don't get okay. a lot. Is it right. hip hop? What's he what's he doing? Yeah, is he, is yeah. Or, I mean or, hip hop. Rap? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, hip hop. He's I'm great. sure uh, here's real I'll one hundred percent sure if you've played me like two or three of his songs, you I'm sure somebody. I've heard them. I Absolutely. just don't know he sings them. Like I don't, Absolutely. Uh, but that's that for a lot of popular music. That's me. I don't know who sings it. I have no idea. And, and I don't know much about him, but I wish I did. And I'm going to start to, if he's a magic fan or if he was just wearing this, cause it was at a local show. That's different. So let's go on to the next one. And this one is by folk hero, uh, Twitter maniac, Jeff, Jeff Welt, God uh, at magic man, eight, one, six. He just, you know, if he's a great follow if you're not already. I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, you follow probably follow Jeff Weltgod. But he came through with 
a topic that we were talking about last episode, point to the 2022 rookie of the year, hashtag magic together. We have Jalen Suggs in a four panel picture. And then we have green to his right pointing to Jalen Suggs. We have Cade Cunningham pointing up to Jalen Suggs. And we have Scotty Barnes underneath with both hands pointed up to Jalen Suggs. Getting back to what we were talking about, uh, the odds are good for Jalen Suggs, Rookie of the Year. How you feeling, Fish? I still feel about the same as I did when we talked about it on the show. Do love this graphic, though, and I know you suggested that most people who listen to this podcast might already follow Magic Man Eight One Six. I don't, but I'm gonna after the show. I just wrote it down because uh, I like stuff like this. It's pretty fun. Uh, I don't think anything's really changed since we talked last show, but it'll be interesting to kind of re-discuss that. That's not probably the way to go about that. But anyway, you can, we're not going to cut that out. We're going to leave it in. That's the way the show rolls. But uh, I, I think after like a few weeks or something like that, we might be able to see a little bit more and we see how many minutes everybody's getting and how things are shaking out. Because if Cade Cunningham plays as a starter all year long, but Suggs doesn't work in until after 20, 25 games, that could end up hurting him in the long run. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't want to put too much pressure on the young man, but it's fun that the whole Magic community can kind of get behind something for this year. We have something to shoot for. If not a team goal, we at least have some individual goals for our players. So I'm digging it. Let's move on. We have a couple in regards to Mo Bamba. This from Media Day Today at Beyond the RK posted a meme. I'm not sure if this person came up with it, but it is a side by side of Mo sitting at the press conference table <laughs> and a jacked up SpongeBob uh, on the right. Cause Mo is, I don't know if it's just the way he's sitting. I think that just makes him right. look like he definitely well, added happened, some, uh, some muscle there. SpongeBob is essentially, he's being held up by his arms. That's how big they are. And when you look at the picture of, of Mo, it definitely looks like he's hitting the gym at the same rate. So I don't know if it's sponge, most sponge, most square bomba or whether we're, we should reference the arms, but uh, some sort of mix there. It's, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good mix. Um, I like the comparison and uh, it, it's, it's very fitting. I like it when people do this. That's why the internet is good. It's one of the reasons. Yeah. It's nice. I'm not, I think you and I kind of missed SpongeBob. Are, are you, are you a SpongeBob guy? Are you a SpongeBob supporter? Do you know anything about the show? Uh, I don't even know what their supporters are. I don't know if they're SpongeBob maniacs or like whatever they are. No, I, I'm not against the show. I'm not super Bobble familiar Files. with it. Um, I, I do a solid Patrick impression. Um, hey, SpongeBob. But like, you know, I just, that's, I, I don't know much. I've seen episodes, but I couldn't name like a full episode and run it down. I mostly know it from memes. I mean, is there a more memeable cartoon ever than SpongeBob SquarePants? I mean, I know this isn't a podcast about that, but you know, I could probably do 15 minutes on. <laughs> uh, a man who lives at Bikini Bottom is a man I want to know. So I, I, I know that about SpongeBob <laughs> and I think the, the watch is is probably worth it. I know I have a lot of jokes in there for adults too. So maybe one day when I'm uh, on some vitamins or something, you know? Uh, and then in line with that, we had a post a little while back from at magic every day or everyday magic. I'm sorry. At everyday magic saying, if you think magic Twitter fan base was fighting during draft season, just wait until the regular season starts and the Wendell versus Bomba civil war begins. So connecting to our Bomba post from Beyond the RK, we touched on this in episode two, I believe, but I'm really excited to see these two compete and hopefully both of them get better. And the ideal situation for us at the end of the year is they both play great and mm -hmm. you know we can negotiate something that they both enjoy, they, they both enjoy their role and a contract that makes both of them feel valued. And maybe, you know, we can have our two, our center and our backup center, our tandem centers moving forward. That's the best case for us. Absolutely best case. Uh, but I, while it looks like Mel's obviously been not skipping arm day, um, I, it doesn't make me feel like he's in the lead at all for this position because some of the people I know that are the most fit, uh, they can't. 
they can't do anything with a ball. You ever realize that sometimes you go see somebody and they're like, oh, you go to the gym all the time and they're really fit or they're a long distance runner or something like that. And then you like throw them a ball and they like don't know how to catch it or hold it. They're like, what do I do with it? And it's like, how can you be like active and like <laughs> that kind of sporty, but like you have no like ball concept skill like to be able to take it and throw a shot into a hoop or like I don't I don't understand that so whenever I see somebody that's jacked or super athletic I still think I can beat him at basketball <laughs> depending on who they are Mo I'm not saying I could beat him <laughs> just for the record but I don't think this puts being in the big arms doesn't make me feel like he has a lead right now over Wendell in any way fair but those Spongebob arms are looking good Mo Mo, Mo pants sponge bomba Moving on to the issue we have to talk about, but really aren't gonna, is the Jonathan Isaac situation with everything that came out from the Rolling Stone article and then him giving his own comments at the press conference day today, media day, and however you feel about it, we're gonna talk basketball here. I think though, we have to mention this meme. I forget who posted it. I'm sorry, we'll post it on post and put it in post production and give you credit. It is, and I'm a Star Wars guy, so you knew this one was going to make the show. That's a mine. That's a mine. It is Anakin and Padme in their romantic scene going back and forth. And Anakin says, I'm still a Magic fan. And Padme replies, not my best Padme voice, but screw Jonathan Isaac, right? And it's just Anakin looking at her saying nothing. Screw him, right? <laughs> and nothing. <laughs> And I just, I loved it because it ca encapsulates and captures. That's what memes are great. They, they capture something. They capture a feeling. And I think yep. this captures the feeling all throughout the magic community, this kind of torn feeling today. We have some infighting over what's good, what's bad. And I think we just need to not lose sight of the bigger picture. We're going to be getting some basketball coming up here soon. We've got a lot of really exciting talent. Maybe Jonathan Isaac's not going to be able to play in some games where there's state mandates around the vaccine, but he's coming off injury. He needs to rest some days anyways. Those will just be his rest days. And hopefully next year, everything's back to normal and we can just move on and play ball. But hopefully this is behind us. Wow. This is, that was the, uh, one of the most, one of the best positive spins I've ever heard on something that could have gone a very bad way. So I don't want to try to say much else because I feel like you nailed it, but you and I were having a text conversation about this completely aside from the show. And I think like this kind of sums up the things we said back and forth. And there really isn't any need to get into how everyone feels about this, that, and the other thing that at the end of the day, we're looking at Jonathan Isaac at a reduced amount, which to be honest, we thought might be possible anyway. Um, and, you know, everyone, I believe everyone can kind of do what they want to do. And sadly, sometimes when everyone does what they want to do, it, it hurts other people. In this case, it, you know, hurts a team and the fans and other guys that are going to be playing with him. And, and but it, it is what it is. That's why we have freedom in this country and uh, people can do what they want. So uh, this is a one for uh, Anthony Hardaway, by the way, not like wearing it in any way to support him and his announcement. Just want to be clear on that one. But he's uh, free to do what he likes yeah um we we wish him the best hopefully uh we just want his knees healthy getting back to that first post tell me what you want some healthy knees for jonathan isaac and mark l Fultz, and that will be a great year ladies and gentlemen so let's get into what's quickly becoming my favorite segment magic the card gathering and this is right. where peach delves into the vaults the coffers the pelf the unending store of magic wow, cards. Get on, yeah. <laughs> get on oh, the yeah. Google machine, kids. What were those words? <laughs> the English teacher is coming out, ladies and gentlemen. He digs into his treasure trove to pull out some of his favorite magic cards to talk a little bit about magic history and, and some fun moments for our team. What do you got for us today, Peach? Walk us through it. Hey, all right. So Magic the Card Gathering, you know, we've got the five kind of like segments that get us through here. We're going to start out today with Background Crasher. And this is basically just uh, somebody interesting that shows up in the back of an Orlando Magic card. I noticed when I was going through my collection, there happens to be a lot of other greats that kind of make their way into, into cards. So I've got the uh, an NBA Hoops Nick Anderson card right here. 
And uh, this is this is one of my favorite photos because John Stockton is just getting rejected by Nick Anderson. And it's always like nice to see a guard getting a block. It's a rare thing, but uh, it's also, you know, an NBA Hall of Famer um, just just getting swatted by Nick Anderson. Just just get out of here. What are you even doing in the lane, little man? And he just I, I, it's a it's a great car. It's, a, it's uh, Nick's third year with the Magic was coming up. And uh, so in his second season. He just gave the swat down to John Stock and let him know, hey, I'm going to be in the backcourt here for Orlando for a while, so don't, don't bring that weak game in here. I love that it's a defensive card. You don't see that much yeah. on a on a pl- on a on a card. You know, we got the the in the shot action, a dunk. Maybe they're down in the. De- you do see a defensive stance, ready. You know, that's a good shot, but you never see a block. That's nice, and we don't think Nick Anderson always defense, but hell of a defender. That's a nice card, Peach. Well, he in this year where they took the, he only had 44 blocks that season. So this was one. <laughs> so there weren't a ton. Like I say, guards don't usually get a lot of blocks, but they happen to capture one. And I like to try to pull cards with a fun picture or something that's a little different than what you normally see, like a guy just dribbling the ball, standing there. Like you've seen that. So I'm trying to bring a little something else to the game. Mm-hmm. Now, we're, now we're going to move on to rookies. And uh, I've selected this man who has just announced his retirement from the NBA. That's JJ Redick from obviously a photo shoot because I don't know how much he went up for two-handed dunks. <laughs> but there he is, 06, 07 NBA rookie, JJ Redick. Um, I disliked him thoroughly when this card came out um, because I was a North, I'm a North Carolina guy and I didn't like him from his days at Duke. But as we discussed on an earlier pod, he kind of won me over at a certain point. And went on to be probably one of the better magic draft picks of the, you know, since Dwight Howard, um, as far as having a good long career, uh, was very productive for a lot of different teams. Um, he had a 15 year career. He had uh, six years with the magic, which was his longest stint consecutive stint with any team. But I feel like he kind of peaked probably when he was with the Sixers, I would say. Um, but I think he had a nice career considering how hard he had to work to adapt his game. I mean, he was the best player in college basketball and then gets drafted by the magic kind of late and has to kind of find his own game and become a different player. And he got so much better defensively in his later years, being able to keep himself on the floor for something other than shooting threes. So an impressive career, a tip of the hat to JJ Redick. He's got a podcast. I know you like, I've heard a couple episodes. Um, so check that out, but hats off hats off because I, well, I can't actually take it off your hats off to, to Mr. JJ Redick on a fine career. Your thoughts yeah. about Mr. Redick. The, the old man in the three is the name of his podcast. I believe he's definitely not the last we've seen of JJ Reddick. He's going to have a long career in podcasting and media. It seems like he really is hitting his stride with that. I agree with you. I mean, I, I was not stoked about JJ coming out and I think a lot of magic fans may have felt the same way. And that's partially because he rode the bench and he couldn't really get, he couldn't really break the rotation and shout out to Phil from locked on magic heard on his podcast, talking about an interesting story about how JJ really wanted to request a trade. And Otis Smith said, you know, wait it out, give us one more year. And that's kind of when he broke through. And as a, as I've grown when I was, I was much younger. So I had more vitriolic emotion back then towards this pick, but now that I'm older, I can appreciate the hard work that he put in and what it, what it amounted to and how it really paid dividends in the length of his career. And now I'm definitely proud to say that he has been in Orlando magic because He's, he's around to stay, and, and it's kind of cool that he, a big part of his career was with our franchise. So definitely uh, stoked for JJ. I wonder if – no, no, he, he won't get hit into the ring of honor. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if he'll get any recognition in Orlando at all in terms of – Oddly, as a wrestling level. fan, the minute you mentioned ring of honor, my head went somewhere else, and I was confused <laughs> I was because I'd love to see JJ wrestle like a match. <laughs> I'd love to see him wrestle a match against somebody, but I, that's not what you're talking about. No, he's not going on the ring of fame. He wasn't around long enough, didn't do enough things, but still a nice, a nice player when he was there and uh, respect shown. All right, let's move on to uh, they played in Orlando, which is a category where I show you a guy that you're like, Oh yeah. Or mm, I did not know that. So don't be fooled by the Rockets logo on the bottom because he got traded in the off season. Uh, but there's Tyrone Liu. You may know him as a coach, but uh, 
There he is. He suited up one season for the Orlando Magic in 03 to 04, played 76 games, averaged a career high 10.5. And then they traded him to Houston. Like I said, he was a part of that, that big deal that Sacatino Mobley and Steve Francis come over. And uh, we shipped off Tracy McGrady and, and Tyrone Liu and, and uh, a couple others, I believe, uh, going that way. Well, we did not get the best of that trade. I will just say that. <laughs> but Tyrone Liu, mostly known for his coaching, but had another had a great career with us. Last last week I had done Steve Kerr. So there's another former coach that played for the Magic. <laughs> if we only we could get these good coaches to coach for us. <laughs> Maybe we got to take them out of the uniform and just be like, yo, we're going to need you back here in a suit. <laughs> I was going to say if, if our player farm system could be as good as our coaching farm system, we'd have won a couple of championships by now based on your, who the hell are they played in Orlando segment? You're not wrong on that. <laughs> uh, let's, let's keep it moving now to who the hell is this, which is my attempt at finding an obscure player that you've never heard of. And man, I think I've really nailed it. I could have saved this one for rookies, but I decided not to. I have found Mr. Brian Evans. Wow. Now, if anyone knows who Brian Evans is, you're probably related to him. Now, this <laughs> is the Brian Evans. He was the 27th overall uh, pick in the 96 draft uh, from Indiana. He was the Big Ten Player of the Year, and he was the first player to lead Indiana in scoring under Bobby Knight. So, I mean, there was high hopes for this guy, but it didn't really last. I've got something here for you. He played 102 career games, only 58 with the Magic. And right, right now, he, so his career ended early. But right now, don't feel bad for him. He co-owns a medical supply company in Indiana. So he's doing okay. But Brian Evans, a first-round pick that didn't come through. But that's what happens when you get those late first-round picks because you had a good season the season before. And that's what happens. It's okay. But Brian Evans, he's a, he was a thing. If you have a Brian Evans jersey, you're a bigger Orlando Magic fan than I've ever even thought about being. Or you're related to him. That's always always an asterisk next to that one. If you're related to him, you can always get the, get, get the beer. I guess he really couldn't thrive in the NBA. He needed a, 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 a coach to throw a chair at him, perhaps like risk a choking. You know, it wasn't, he, it, it just, they weren't holding him to a high enough standard in the NBA. That's probably what happened there. Yeah. So if Tyrone Liu would have been there to coach or, or, or Steve Kerr, as we discussed, maybe he would have been a little motivated to keep it going, but I, I didn't expect you to have a lot of thoughts on Brian Evans. Cause I knew this would be the first time you've heard of him. <laughs> oh, I just had a thought on Bobby Knight. That's all I had for you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's a good reference point. Cause I know that all happened before you were born. So, <laughs> uh, All right. So lastly, we've got our stat of the week. And honestly, I don't know if this guy's come up on the podcast yet, but he should. because I'm about to wax poetic about him for a bit. Here's Terry Catledge. Ooh. Terry Catledge was the leading scorer for the Magic in their first season. 19.4 points a game, including 149-point effort in there. As you can see right here, he wore the number 33, which is why when Shaquille O'Neal was drafted, he went away from his 33 that he wore at LSU and moved to 32 out of respect for this guy. He was on the original Orlando Magic team. and was one of our main leaders. This guy could score inside. What a great player. This is actually the McDonald's upper deck set. Um, this is a pretty rare set that was sold only in the Orlando area. There's a Shaquille O'Neal rookie in this one that has a, a high value, but this was the team set McDonald's upper deck um, from Shaq's rookie year. But there's Terry. Terry Catman Catledge was his nickname. Uh, back in 1989, when they started the team, they only sold gear of two guys, Reggie Theus, who's another great player I'll mention on a future show, and Terry Catman Catledge. My dad selected that Terry Catman Catledge hat. It was one of the best moves he ever made because after we went to a game, a few days later, we were over by a bank, and who pulls up to deposit his Orlando Magic check probably? Terry Catman Catledge. No. He waved me and my dad over, waved me and my dad over, signed my dad's hat, shook my hand, my hand disappeared i was a 10 year old boy meeting terry catledge this uh let me get the stats on catledge he's a big dude 6'8 230 and just couldn't have been nicer from his convertible car just saying hi to us while he's at the bank and uh that was a pretty cool moment and i think that was the moment that really solidified oh yeah i like the celtics back in 89 in the late 80s but uh you know what I'm a Magic fan now. <laughs> I'm all in. So Terry Catman College is a special spot in my heart, and he should, and all Orlando Magic fans, leading scorer in the very first season of the Orlando Magic. The other guy I mentioned, Reggie Theus, he was second. So they've chose the right two guys to make gear of. 
Wow. And that's what a, a, and that's, what a story. That's magic to card gathering. I've got I tales, love friend. I love this segment, man. It, it knows no end. It just keeps getting better. How do you do it? Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I do get, I do see things a lot. And it think, makes me think of a story. Um, mo- that's why I like to decorate places, you know, like this, almost every sign, banner, jersey, something like that. You see it, you think about it, it, you have a story. And when I was a kid collecting cards, I would remember the times, you know, I'm putting them in a binder, I'm putting them in a top loader and like, oh, I love this card and you just take them to school sometimes, show them to friends. So I love things that trigger moments. And these things really trigger a lot of Orlando magic moments for me. So I wanted to make it part of the show. Well, man, you are a great storyteller. That's why I'm so excited to be meeting up with you every other week and, and talking basketball and Orlando magic and a little bit about our lives as cousins. And this next segment here is, is one that most podcasts have done. And I think it'll allow uh, our new audience to kind of get to know us a little bit. Maybe it is our all time magic team. So we can tell a little bit of a story with this. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Or I just should we talked go... for a while. So why don't you go? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting some wings via our non-sponsor, but not a bad idea for drinking during a podcast about the magic, the blue edition Red Bull. So while I get some wings in, I'd like to hear what your, what your all-time team is. Now we do, are we doing like first, second, third? Are we just doing the top team? Let's go position by position. Okay. Yeah. Fire so away. let's start with the big one. We've had so many greats in the franchise's short history. We're talking about the center position. We have manufactured some great centers. We've had some great centers come through the Orlando Magic, and we've really been blessed with that. I am going to go with the center on my all-time team, Dwight Howard. Now, obviously, hmm. it's, I mean, it came down to, to, Sha- to Shaq and Dwight, and then you got Vooch, but you know, and, and Vooch has a strong case, but for me, I had to go with Dwight. He's got the most minutes played as a magic. Okay. I know you're shaking your head. You're shaking your head. You listen, you listen. I'm not done my argument. Give me, let, let me, let me present my evidence. Okay. Most minutes played most rebounds. If we're talking about a big man, what is the purpose of the big man to get that board? And Dwight Howard has more in an Orlando magic uni than any other player. He's got the most points in our franchise history, 11,435. And this one, this, uh, maybe I'm finding a little bit of a loophole here. Maybe I'm kind of reading outside the question. But the fact that Shaq just walked in free agency and Dwight had signed a deal and at least allowed us to trade him and get assets back, which included Nikola Vucevic, who then led us, led us to the playoffs later. You know, for me, that changes and tints the way that I view Dwight versus the way I view Shaq. Um, and maybe those, and those things are probably just mostly out of their control, but I always appreciated that Dwight, even though the way on his way out was kind of messy with Stan, I blame more of the front office for that. And I think that at least we got something back. And so Dwight on the court and then his benefit off the court, I'm going with Dwight. I'd like to remind everyone that today we're sponsored, but not sponsored, by Cottonelle Flushable Wipes. Yeah, every time you hit the bathroom, make sure you walk away with the cleanest, cleanest butt in town. Hit these babies on your culo after dropping a deuce, and you, you'll feel better than Dwight Howard dropping a jam down the lane. That's right, Cottonelle Flushable Wipes. They're plumber tested, so they're safe. You can use them, they're not just for babies' butts and then throw them away. Flush them right down. Cottonelle Flushable Wipes. So the reason I was reacting that way to uh, your Dwight Howard as, on your all-time team is because I know Shaq would have reacted poorly to Dwight being above him on a list as the joke they played on him on Inside the NBA did uh, when he fell down the all-time centers list. So to think that he's not number one on the Magic all-time list would have set him, but you made some great points about where he left the franchise and how that went. But I think you're understating Dwight Howard's final days in Orlando where he had one season of awkwardness where we didn't know where he was staying, coming, going. Do I buy a jersey? Do I not? Is he here? Is he gone? It, it was, I didn't care for that. I didn't like the, it being dragged out. Shaq was gone so fast and we didn't even realize it. It's like 
heartbreaking, but it was like, oh, he's just he's just gone now. And it is nice we got some stuff for Dwight, but I'm talking about how the player is. And if I have to get these players, when the, and it, Dwight was very good. There was no mistaking that. He's definitely on my number two team. But Shaquille O'Neal's the number one center for me. And I thought that was a slam dunk on everyone's list, but I see you went a different route. But made some points that make sense, but I, I'm going Shaq here, even though it's it's an easy one. Sometimes you got to give the MVP to LeBron James because he's just the best player. You can't just ignore him because you don't feel like giving it to him again. And and that's kind of where I'm at here, Shaq, for sure. No, that's fair. I think I am being a little spiteful and maybe a little recency bias in there because you talk about how you have memories attached to, to certain moments, certain cards, certain memorabilia. I think that's universal for all fans. And I definitely have a lot of memories attached to that Dwight Howard team because that's when I was in college in Boston. I was going to every game when they were coming to Boston to play and, and getting to some in Florida. I was really dialed in and watching tons of games. And so my all-time four is another one out of left field. It's going to be Rashard Lewis. I just, I think that he was such a key addition to that team and once we had him, we really just took off and we were in Eastern Conference Finals back to back to back. Obviously, Hito was important there, but he's more of a three. I didn't consider him as a four. And, you know, Richard Lewis, maybe not the biggest splash in terms of all time numbers on the Magic. He's six and three point field goals made, which is impressive. Um, and, you know, other fours are, are nowhere on that three point list in our history. So he's really solidly the only power forward on that three point list. And, you know, I think that he was really ahead of the curve that that team was ahead of the curve in terms of where the NBA is going. So I'm, I'm creating my team here. If they're going to get on the court and play today, we're going to have some of that saber metrics in there and mm -hmm. we're going to want a stretch four, and we're going to stretch it out just like Stan did and have Dwight in the middle, getting rebounds, passing out to Rosard Lewis, who could really shoot the rock. And I just love to see him do it. Well, you made a great point about our connection to teams because I, Rashard Lewis is a fantastic player for sure. Um, I don't think of him as a power forward. He definitely did play it. And you're right. It's because they were kind of changing up a style right there. Uh, my, my power forward is going to be Horace Grant. And as you can see, this pattern developing, I have Shaq and Horace. And you have Dwight and Rashard. So you can see when we kind of started our, our a super fandom in there. But uh, for me, I like a power forward that rebounds, plays solid defense. I don't need him to score a ton of points for me because I'm an old school hoops guy. And I like to play power forward back in the day. You know, you don't, you don't guard the tallest guy, but you guard like the second tallest guy and you board like a mother and, and Horace Grant, he had the style, he had the goggles. He came in from Chicago and gave our team swagger, swagger that they needed to hit the next level. Horace Grant for me all the way on that team. And he might even be the worst player I have on, the, on my number one team, but he's an integral glue guy that is your power forward. And that's what I need because I've already got Shaq inside too. And if Shaq and Horace can't get those boards, no one's, no one is. And I like his leadership. Like you said, he came over with that swagger. He had the experience and it really helped that team catapult. So kind of similar, kind of similar trends there. We brought in a four. And with both teams in both eras, and that was the missing piece that put it over the top. We're going to our small forward, I guess, our three. And if you listen to episode one and episode two, you probably know where I'm going with this. I'm going with T-Mac. I mean, just electric. He really got us through those dog days when we thought we were going to have the first super team and then didn't uh, and really, really didn't. And it was just him with kind of an amalgamation of other dudes out there and him just trying to will us to victories. And he did will us too many. He's fourth in points of all-time magic, second in free throws. And you might say, Kyle, I don't care about free throws. But it really shows that the dude went to the rack. And I think that, you know, we haven't had a lot of guys with that level of explosivity that could finish. I mean, he was positively high-powered, potent, going to the hoop, 
I mean, people got out of his way and he put you on a poster if you didn't. And that was just exciting in a time that we didn't have much going on. And I think with a better team around him, it's really unfortunate. He could have been a guy on an Eastern Conference Finals team, a contender with a couple other Batmans with him. So on my yeah, super if only team, he'd had if only he'd had help. Oh no. Is that a Grant Hill card? You can't do that. That's the ghost of Grant Hill coming to haunt the pod. Hey, we talk good about one Duke guy on the show. I can't do it twice. <laughs> Who's your three? Uh, well, I love everything you said about T Mac, and it's almost a little sidebar here. I have T Mac on my all time team as a shooting guard. Um, I, I think he kind of went back and forth between the two. Sometimes he'd even handle the ball. I mean, he was the best player we had. So we let him do whatever he wanted. I have him as a shooting guard on my team for all those reasons you said. And I think if he has any of these other players around him, this team would have been awesome. Um, but at my, at my uh, small forward, I've got Hedu Turkaloo um, because you talk about getting to the rack. And I just felt like on that run, which most of your players are from, no one could get to the rack easier than Hey Dude Turkaloo. It was crazy. And I remember even when he was with the Spurs, this guy sometimes wouldn't start for teams, but then comes in in the clutch and you need a bucket and he finds a way to get to the hole. Like, I, I don't understand. I didn't feel like he had like sickest crossover or, uh, but he just found ways to get to the, to the hoop and get easy shots. And, and man, that's an invaluable skill. And with the team that I've built here, I need, that slasher i need somebody to get in there and with him and t-mac doing a bulk of that kind of scoring and grant and shack sucking up rebounds i'm liking my all-time magic team and he do might not make a lot of people's lists but what he did in his time in orlando was just that's what i wanted to ask all forward no i i mean i can't i cannot agree with you more man i just the positioning were a little different but when i was looking at who I wanted to pick for this bit, you see Hedo Turkolo's name sprinkled over every single statistical <laughs> ranking for the Orlando Magic. I mean, he's just, he's everywhere. I think most free throws, or no, not, not that was Dwight, but he's up there in free throws, three-point attempts, field goals made, points. He was and really he didn't unstoppable. Even, he didn't even play like a long time with the Magic either. It's not like we're no. talking about a 15-year career here. We're talking about a small window of his career. But no matter where he was, whether he's in, you know, uh, I believe he was in Sacramento and then San Antonio. He got around more than he should have for a player with his talents and skill. Yeah, he really found a sweet spot in Orlando. And you're right. He There didn't look to be much to his game. He kind of just plotted along, but he was very methodical. Really kind of reminds me of Luka Doncic's game. Doesn't necessarily overwhelm you with athleticism, but he's tricky. He's crafty. He knows how to position his body. And he's going to get to the hoop. He's going to get the shot he wants. He's going to create that separation. He was integral. So I'll do my last two since we know that T-Mac was your two. So I'll go to my two, which is, of course, D3, Dennis Scott, the three-point assassin. I mean, I, I'm probably going with D3 almost as much for his career as an anchor for the NBA.com and, and NBA TV. He's just dynamite. The guy is a whole lot of fun. And of course the three point leader in Orlando magic history. So if I'm building a team for now, well, today's NBA is all about the three and I'm taking the best one we've had in history. Okay. Dennis Scott. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dennis Scott, man. Uh, I feel like Dennis Scott played a lot of small forwards. So maybe if you just swap. Here, oh, okay. There we but, go. Yeah. But, but regardless, uh, yeah. Every time I hear Dennis Scott and I hear the three D I can hear the noise from the arena after he hit that three, three D and the like from, and it just, you'd hear it on TV or you'd see it when you're at the game. And it was just, just nothing more electric than that. Um, I remember one time when I was in Orlando, Dennis Scott hit a three to win a game when we were down there, just watching it on TV. And, the, and the, we, I think we were at a Hooters and this place went bananas. And it was just like, I don't know. Yeah. I love, I love Dennis Scott. It's hard to argue about against him being on, on the top team. Uh, you're not going to get an argument for me because he's on my second so people jumping for joy at a at a for, at a hooters i can see why that's a memorable moment um at my point guard position i'm going with a representative from the heart and hustle squad another maybe not so obvious pick i could have gone penny obviously uh but i'm gonna go daryl armstrong 
I, I just had to have someone from that team. I, I, there's something about me. I, I love an underdog. That's why I really like this year's team because I do think we could be good and maybe surprise some people. I'm, I'm hoping that the team can go back, dig in, you know, the ground, the backyard there and, and come up with a time capsule and just open that sucker up and Daryl Armstrong pops out and we get some of the heart and hustle. You know, that was just a fun team. Doc Rivers, first year coaching, Bo Outlaw, Ben Wallace was on that team, Corey Maggetti, Monty Williams, who just got a job uh, coaching, and our boy, the, the ultimate screen center, screen setter, Doliak. You know, so just guys like, and there was a whole bunch of other guys that I didn't even list because uh, you just won't recognize their names. And they were supposed to win 10 games. One could argue you shouldn't have mentioned the names you did. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they were supposed to win 10 games. They they end up winning 40. Missed the playoffs by one game, but mm -hmm. it quite possibly could be the most endearing year of Orlando Magic basketball in the history of the franchise. So I just had to have someone on there. I feel I, like Dennis Scott is my connection to Penny and the 90s teams, but, uh, you know, who, who's who's your one? My one is one. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's Penny Hardaway. I mean, I, you're not going to get a shock here for me. I appreciate what you do with your list because you did it based on like almost like your vibe. I feel like if I had made a list with the same vibe that you were throwing out, I would have had Terry Catledge at power forward probably based on the story I told earlier. But I'm putting together an ultimate team that's going to win you know, that's going to beat the 72 win bulls. That's going to like defeat the warriors and like the teams that would dominate today. So I want Penny Hardaway in there that I feel like probably the closest thing we've had to a magic Johnson esque power forward or power, uh, point guard in the NBA since. And it would have been great if he could have stayed healthy and been around for longer to show that off. But you give me a prime penny a uh, point almost uh, over anybody else in history it really honestly so it's a slam dunk when you're trying to pick just an orlando magic team that he would be my point guard and i feel like my lineup is nice and if we could somehow simulate our game versus each other i feel like penny would have a little bit of an advantage over daryl armstrong <laughs> just just a hair but you know what you, you, it's, it is hard to put a uh, an amount or a a stat on the, the heart and the hustle of that squad and uh, he was a big part of that I mean I'm not going to say he doesn't fall on my second or third teams down the rug but uh yeah I gotta go Penny it's all it's all the way yeah I think your team would beat mine too I was not thinking about defense <laughs> when I uh put Daryl at the at the one he might be a little undersized like, but that guy he got after it though he not not just I'm not slandering uh, Daryl Armstrong's defense at all. That guy could play, but against Penny, yeah, I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he, he. I feel like I remember him having some fast hands. I wouldn't call him the glove. Maybe he's like a pair of crocheted mittens. Um, and, and, and I felt like his defense was solid, so don't sleep on that. But, you know, he's a little smaller, and I feel like the size differential alone against Penny. Like, Penny could back him down and just take him on the post. That's a bucket every time. Well, those are our dream teams, ladies and gentlemen. Peach, as always, man, it's been a pleasure. I love getting together with you. We do this every other week, ladies and gentlemen. Get together, have some laughs with our cousin, and uh, talk some basketball. Do you have something else there, Peach? I do. I have something else. I think, uh, first of all, I want to put up put up our all-time teams on the website at some point so that people can take a look at them. They can start the debate there. And speaking of debate, in the future, when we go into our wager segment, we're going to be bringing this bad boy in. What is that That's right. beauty? This is the Orlando championship belt right here. And you and I are going to be going toe to toe for it. We're going to do Ooh. two shows. There's going to be points. It's going to be a championship. It's going to be fun, everybody. So spoiler, there was fun lies ahead. Champions will be crowned. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for in enjoying this with us. Please like subscribe, uh, engage with us on social media, and we'll see you in two weeks. Peace. Thanks for coming.